Managing expectations is crucial when learning something new because having clarity on your journey is what will keep you motivated. I call this the management of learning French. French is hard. I said it. It's even hard to learn for native French speakers. Conjugation, spelling, gender of nouns, all the evil rules of grammar and nasty exceptions. I will never fully master French ever. So whether you started learning French yesterday or at school 30, 40, 50 years ago and are still struggling to speak it, please be patient and kind with yourself. Patient because maybe you are on the wrong path, only concentrating on formal written French and need to rewire your brain for spoken French. Or patient because you're just starting out and the road will take a while. My only rule here is be persistent. Keep up the good work, don't give up. I will be your guide and push you out of your comfort zone when you need it. Lots of students tell me I'm too old to learn, no matter the age. My grandson is learning French and he's almost bilingual already. Only children can learn a new language. That is not true. And one, you're not a child anymore. You don't have all their free time to learn 24 seven. And two, you have the benefit of age, the experience of what works for you and the strategy to concentrate on what will make a difference. Leverage. Maybe you won't learn nursery rhymes nor read Paw Patrol in French, but you can concentrate on how to efficiently buy a croissant and make friends with a neighbor. Use your age to your advantage. You will be slower than your granddaughter to memorize all the color names, but you will have fun talking about your passion for cycling, even if you have to use Google Translate from time to time. I've taught students from 30 to 90, and it is not age that slows you. It's motivation. I always start my live lessons with students with the same question. What do you want to achieve with your French? Not what level you want to reach, not what exam you want to pass or what tense you're struggling with. Do you want to book a tour in French at the Office du Tourisme during your next visit to Carcassonne instead of hiding behind your spouse whose French is bad but who is not afraid to speak? Do you want to have coffee with an elderly neighbor who speaks French and would love some company? Or would you love to finally join a conversation class without the shame of not speaking French, even though you've been studying it for 30 years and can read Les Miserables en français? As you can see, none of these are about a level or being fluent or mastering the French subjunctive. It's about connection. It's about fun and enjoying life. You will be so proud of yourself and I will be very happy for you too. No matter your current level, all these goals are realistic. It's about setting up the right timeline and milestones. When we want to start, we often look for resources to structure our learning. For books, the series I've been recommending for 12 years is the Progressive du Français series by Clé International. Their exercise books fit any level from A1 to C2, with a focus on each aspect of the language, vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, communication. It's my favorite way to understand the fundamentals of French. Yes, it is a bit old school because you will need to sit down and study with a pen and paper, but I know you're all dedicated students with a great professional career, so I trust that you will love this too. If your French is a bit rusty and you just want some exercises, the Pratique Révision A1 exercise book with a recap of French rules would be my recommendation. In terms of online courses at Commune Française, I offer spoken French essentials for students whose French is a bit rusty and for those who want a solid start to learning real everyday spoken French. I also offer Exercise Your French. It's a structured program with deeper lesson and regular quizzes about French culture and etiquette. What all French people know but won't tell you directly. For apps, even though I don't like the complete lack of context in their teaching of language, I would recommend Duolingo if you like it. Any start is a good start in French and I will trust the minds behind the algorithm to get you hooked enough to finish the program. However, please, please, please only see Duolingo more as a fun game than a cultural tool. 
A good learning hack is to supplement any of these programs with flashcards and space repetition. They are an effective way to actually remember what you learn in the long term. You can make them yourself on paper or use an app like Anki, for instance. Finally, the best recommendations always come from the learners, you. So please, please share your recommendations with the other students in the comments below the video. But no matter how much you study, if you don't use it, it is useless. And no, you don't need a native French language partner to practice. It's an excuse I hear a lot. Practicing is about getting the words from your brain to your mouth. So you can talk to your dog in French when you walk them, to your cat when you cuddle them, or to your favorite tree when you hug them in French. Many of my students' dogs are now bilingual. You can also talk to yourself in the mirror in the morning in French. You can also fake a conversation in the street using headphones. People will think you have a very patient French friend with great listening skills. At last, you can also get a fellow Francophile on board and have a regular French coffee session. Practicing with another French learner is what my best students do in my French Conversation Club program. Some have been meeting each week for years. It is a great way to make friends. What matters is to speak French, not just to absorb lists of vocabulary. Be careful with the illusion of immersion though. I hear this a lot. I need to be in France to learn French. This is a lie as well. In France, you will be faced with people speaking fast, with vocabulary and grammar you never learned and people who don't have the time to be your practice partner because they have a life. If you want to use your time in France to practice your French, you must prepare. Immersion without preparation often means coming back home feeling humiliated, embarrassed and ashamed because I should be able to speak and understand by now. No, French is hard, remember? Learning vocabulary about your passions is the best way to keep motivated because you will be pushed by doing what you love. Gardening, opera singing, pet caring, art history, cycling. If you live in France, please join une association around your passion in order to make friends who love hiking, art history or cats as much as you do. There are 1.3 million associations in France, so I am sure you will find your new French best friend there. If you are far from France, find a French TV show about your passion. For French history lovers, I would recommend Des Racines et des Ailes. For gardeners, Silence, Ça Pousse. And animal lovers, Une Saison aux Zoo, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. For books, this is the only place where I will recommend children and teenager books because what we call les documentaires are absolutely wonderful for teaching you the vocabulary you miss, especially series like Copain des for gardening, pets, other animals, astronomy, anything that you might love. If you're learning French with a child around, the series Mes Petits Doc is extremely popular these days. My son has tons of them and they're really good. And the series for children a bit older, like over seven around history, science, society, will get you up to date with this kind of vocabulary. They're also excellent for preparing a trip to France. When you start Start learning French, it is very easy to start with greetings because they're very cultural and very important. Catch also a few essential phrases and understand some basic grammar. Let's start with the very classic bonjour, bonjour, easy, but never say bonjour twice to the same person in the same day. I have a full lesson on that. After 6 p.m., we say bonsoir, bonsoir. We don't have a translation for good afternoon, okay? We also have merci for thank you and s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Now some essential phrases. Excusez-moi for excuse me. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. C'est très beau. That's really beautiful. C'est très beau. J'adore. J'adore. You can also start engaging with simple listening and reading materials. For example, news in slow French coffee break French, 
or le journal en français facile de RFI. Just to get you used to spoken French, you don't have to understand everything, but at least it's there and you can read the transcripts as well. Now that you have the basics, you can start expanding your vocabulary and grammar understanding. For vocabulary, my best recommendation is to try to translate nouns you need in your everyday life. Do you have a son? Learn un fils, un fils. Have a granddaughter? Learn une petite fille, une petite fille. You are a lawyer? It's un avocat, un avocat, or une avocate, etc. Start your vocabulary learning with the core of your life. And learn the gender of those nouns as well. Le pain, la ville, le train, la voiture, etc. For grammar, keep an eye on everyday spoken French grammar. It will give you the biggest return on investment if you want to speak French quickly and understand something like Netflix. Unless you are studying for an exam. If you want to pass an exam, stick to your textbook, okay? You will learn spoken French later. Otherwise, here are two examples of conjugation that will really help you in everyday spoken French. Learn le futur proche, that is built as je vais voir, I am going to see. And le passé immédiat, which is I just did something, and we say je viens de, and then you add a verb. Check those two out, they're important for you. At this level, you can also start to form simple sentences and have short conversations. You can start building sentences like Le train arrive à 8h, the train arrives at 8. J'ai faim, on va déjeuner. Here you should spot the use of on instead of nous that you might have learned in your textbook, when we say on in everyday spoken French. Je vais prendre un café, merci. Je vais prendre un café, merci. Remember, this is le futur proche. A very good use of it to order coffee. Bonjour, je voudrais une baguette, s'il vous plaît. Here you have the greeting at the beginning with bonjour and the please at the end. It's also great here to start exploring French music strategically. I mean, not just listen to Edith Piaf in the background. Find things that you like, that you can listen to in French and read the lyrics to spot new words and expressions that you would love to remember. It's easier with songs and get the habit of listening to French pronunciation in those songs as well. When you reach intermediate proficiency, you can start engaging in more complex conversations. Practice deeper conversations about your own life. Describe your everyday life in French. Talk about the last movie you watched. Talk about a trip you made recently, in France maybe. The point here is to give your nuanced opinion. A good idea would be to join or create a French book club, even just a WhatsApp group with other Francophiles, where you can have discussions in French about a topic. That's something that my students enjoy in the 30 Day French Challenge, for example, where we explore French places and culture. Now that you understand French a bit better, dive into French media. I cannot not talk about the most famous one for French learners, which is TV 5 Monde. It's a classic with news and programs from all around the francophone world. You can also check out Arte.tv. It's more widely available than France.tv, which is the French TV programs. They have great programs and the app is really good. For any program that you like, please use subtitles in French. Don't be ashamed. One day you will be able to understand without them, but so far it's really good. Obviously, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus now offer a very wide range of French programs. I recommend the French agency, Call My Agent and Lupin. They're all really good and the French there is excellent. For newspapers beyond the classic Le Monde, you can check out other formats available online, such as Le 1, for example, that covers one news topic every week with a fun paper format, if you can buy it in France. You can check out La Croix if you're Christian, though lots of non-Christian people read it as well. It's my summer newspaper, to tell you the truth. Or even magazines such as Marie Claire, I really like their interviews or Telerama for cultural recommendations. When you're learning a language, the best way to test yourself, again, is to use it. For example, next time that you plan a trip to France or another French-speaking region, 
do it entirely in French. Research accommodations, transportations, and activity online using only French websites. Then practice making phone calls or writing emails to book reservations or ask for information all in French. A great way to stay motivated is to celebrate small victories. When we study hard, we tend to take them for granted and then move on to the next mountain to climb. I am super guilty of this as well. A solid tip is to journal about your French learning journey, not just to take notes about grammar and conjugation. Write about your struggles and successes and celebrate those milestones. When you will reread the journal in 12 months, you will see how much you've accomplished. First French movie without English subtitles, yay! First conversation entirely in French with Madame Martin, yes as well! First email in French without using Google Translate, félicitations! Joining online communities or local groups is also very important to stay motivated. If you have a local class or an Alliance Française that you can attend, go! It's a great start and it will keep you motivated. And students and teachers will cheer you up. That's what students love in my French Conversation Club and the 30 Day French Challenge because you're struggling, succeeding, celebrating together and it will prevent you from giving up. French is hard so you'll have plenty of temptations to stop learning. While on your French journey, it's very important to regularly assess your progress and adjust your methods as you improve. Take a look at your journal six months ago. Look at all this progress. Félicitations! Also, every year, take a look at your textbooks, your courses, your learning habits. Are they still a good fit? Do you need more accountability? Some feedback on your accent? More context for all the French vocabulary that you learn? Or even to take a break from French for the summer to prevent a burnout? I often recommend students to get a one-on-one -on -one lesson with a private teacher, even online at least once a week, to get you back on the right track. A yearly checkup is always a good thing. Today, we've explored the journey of learning French, from managing expectations to structuring your approach. Remember, French is challenging, but with patience and persistence, you can achieve your goals. Concentrate on practical, personal objectives rather than abstract levels and tailor your learning to your own interests. It is your turn now. In the comments, share your biggest French learning challenge. Is it pronunciation of some sounds or some words in particular? Confusing French grammar? Or is it finding the courage to speak? Which tools and structure do you use in your French journey? Let's talk about it together in a supportive way. Or you can start your new learning journey right now with the special resources from my newsletter. You will get the full written versions of my weekly lessons, exclusive tips and personal recommendations. Allez, à très vite.